Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode in our series on fly casting. Today I want to introduce a relatively new concept, I think, uh, that we, we've kind of come up with over the past few years, and I think it's something that'll really help you with your fly casting. But just a little bit of review, you know, I've, I'm down here in Florida, and we've been teaching a, a fly casting a class, a fly fishing school, and <clears throat> just a couple of things that have really come to note again working with a lot of students over the past few days and just a reminder and this is going to tie into what i'm going to talk about here but you really want to remember that you always start and you always end a fly cast with your rod tip below your belt and if you're practicing in a field i really want you to put your rod tip on the ground this is so, so, so critical import of importance. And so many people want to start their cast here. And if you start your cast here, you're really only making half of a cast, okay? Start your cast here, you're making half of a cast. Just like if you creep forward during the stroke, during while the line's straightening out behind you, you're only making half a cast coming forward. And it's very hard to be good and to make a good cast if you only make half of one. And then when you're fishing, you want to put your rod tip as, uh, as close to the water as you can. In my case, I've got some lily pads here, but if those weren't there, I'd have the tip of my rod in the water, okay? You're going to put your tip of the rod in the water to start your fly cast, okay? And again, you, you've heard me say this, a fly cast should act like an airplane taking off a runway. And if you start your cast here, your runway is only half length, okay? Go ahead and use the whole runway. It's there and it's free. The other thing I wanna bring up is, I think it's of utmost importance that you put your thumb on the end of the cork grip. Okay, again, I worked with uh, uh, 16 students over the weekend here in Florida, and each and every one of them were trying to cast with their, with their hand back here. And if you remember from Little League Baseball or softball, they told you to choke up on the bat. And you're going to be absolutely amazed at how much control you have over the tip of the rod and what it does. And you're going to have, uh, be amazed at how much tip, more tip speed you get. Even if you move your thumb a half inch up to the end of that cork. That is so, so, so important. So the concept I want to talk about here today stems from uh, two people that have been influential in my fly casting uh, career and the way that I teach fly casting. And that's first and foremost a gentleman by the name of Jim Green. And uh, Jim was a famous rod designer. I believe he worked with uh, Fenwick. Uh, he may have worked with Sage at, at one point. But anyway, Jim did a video, and I forget what it's called, once we figure out the name, we'll put it down here, and maybe we'll even put a link because you can find this video on YouTube these days. But Jim Green did a video where he talked about relaxing your wrist after you've stopped the cast at the top, okay? He talked about stopping the rod tip and then relaxing, relaxing the tip back. Then stop. Now your rod is angling up and your line angles up. So stop and open your wrist. Stop and open the wrist. The back cast is simple as that. It doesn't take any exceptional amount of strength. It's just a smooth application. Stop and open your wrist. You've also heard me say this, and you've heard Flip Pallet say this here in this series. And of course, it was taught to me by Flip. Um, but Flip absolutely, the method that Flip teaches is based on breaking your wrist. Yes, I said that, breaking your wrist, okay? But it's important that you understand when to break your wrist. You don't break your wrist during the loop formation, okay? You break your wrist after the loop has been formed and is traveling up and high behind you, okay? So you're gonna break that wrist after you stop. So you're gonna stop, drop, and roll. Remember what they taught you in kindergarten? If you ever caught on fire, 
like all like 90% of all kids were going to spontaneously combust you're going to stop and once you stop the rod it's like pulling a trigger on a gun the loop is going okay you can touch your rod tip to the ground and that loop still stays intact again you can still make a cast but in all in all practicality um, it's really the same thing that I just told you about starting your cast low. We're going to form that loop. We're going to relax the wrist so that we start this part of the cast from low as well. Very similar. You, if you've watched this series, you've heard Flip Pallet talk about throwing a golf ball. And if you're trying to throw a golf ball far, you're not going to throw it from here. You're going to throw it from way back here. Same with a baseball pitcher on a mound. He's not going to throw a 90 mile an hour fastball from his ear, nor should you begin your forward cast from your ear. That's half of a cast and it's going to wind up collapsing in front of you. Okay? So the concept that I want to introduce to you here, we've talked about breaking the wrist before you've heard Flip talk about it. Please go watch that video from Jim Green. It's an excellent, excellent fly casting video. Again, a link right there or it's maybe down below me if you can't see it. The concept I want to introduce comes from my musical background. Okay, and, and I actually studied jazz guitar in college. I've been a musician all of my life. And it kind of dawned on me over the time in teaching and doing these videos and working with students for uh, some 33 years now of my life, it dawned on me that fly casting is in 4-4 four, four time. And if you know anything about music, 4-4 four, four time is a time signature, and that means that there's four beats per measure in written music. And most modern day music that you turn on the radio, blues and rock and roll, it's almost all in 4-4 four, four time. There's four beats to a measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. So fly casting, you can actually break it down and say it's in 4-4 four, four time. And I think if you start to think about it this way, it's going to help you understand these different components. The stop, the drop, the stop, and the drop. Okay, so watch, one, two, three, four. So beat one is I stop the tip of the rod and I form the loop. Beat two is I relax my wrist and drop the rod tip backwards, or I wind up like a baseball pitcher, or I extend the length of my runway. Beat three is I've drugged the rod forward and I've stopped the tip, traveling in a straight line, of course, I stop the tip and I form that loop coming forward. And then beat four is of course I'm going to drop the rod down to fishing position. So again, it's in four, four time. We're going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The shorter your fly cast, the faster the time. If you're making a very short fly cast, that rhythm of the cast might be something like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The longer the fly cast, the slower the rhythm of the song becomes. It may wind up being one, two, three, four. And if it's a really long fly cast, one, two, three, four. A little slower on the rhythm, okay? But I also want you to notice this. My hall, my, my opposite hand, is also in 4-4 four, four time. It's working in, in conjunction with my dominant hand, my casting hand. So the hall is also in 4-4 four, four time. And the first beat is I'm going to pull the rod to a stop. Then as I'm relaxing my wrist and dropping the tip of the rod back, I'm allowing the hands to catch up and I'm allowing this line to tighten. Beat three is again when we pull the rod to a stop and we form that loop, and then beat four is the hands come back together yet again, okay? So this hand is doing one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When you go to put the two together, 
I understand. It's a little bit like being a drummer and one hand's doing one thing and then the other hand's doing the other thing. But I think once you start to think of this as being in 4-4 four, four time, okay, and there's four beats to a fly cast. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When we drop the tip back like this, it's the same thing as starting with your rod tip on the ground or in the water, okay? We're lengthening the runway, we're winding up like a baseball pitcher. It's supercharging, 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 supercharging the rod, and then you bring it up to that loop formation plane, that straight line path of the rod tip that gives you that tight loop, and then it's just like slicing hot butter. So just a kind of a new concept, a new way to think about fly casting. Um, and, and it kind of relates to something that we can all relate to, even if you're not a musician, uh, when you hear a song on the radio, you tap your foot along with it, and that's gonna give you an idea, and now you know those components. Beat one is I stop the rod tip, beat two is I break my wrist, drop the tip back, beat three is I form the loop coming forward with a stop, and then I'm gonna lower the rod down to fishing position. This hand, one, two, three, four. The haul is also in 4-4 time. So again, go back and watch that video from Jim Green. Go back and review all of our episodes here on the fly casting series. We've got more coming from Flip Pallet. We've got more coming from other friends. Uh, so please stay tuned. And uh, we really appreciate being here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss an episode. And uh, get out there and practice.